Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. Glad you guys are here. We return to the 2007 purple slash blue Chevrolet Cobalt with 2.2 liter Ecotec four cylinder. It's not a comeback, it's a do more. That's right. We are going to uh, take a look at those rear brakes and address that. And I have also learned that uh, ever since yesterday actually, the day prior to servicing the fuel tank that was leaking on this car, the AC has stopped uh, ACing. It's blowing super hot right now. I don't even think the compressor is kicking on. So let's uh, go ahead and skip our test drive action, get this into the shop, and then uh, we'll get the wheels off the rears, check out the brakes, and then we'll go ahead and proceed and check out the AC. So stay tuned because this is going to be a very good video. Happening Z Hood. On that note, it might be kind of a noisy video. We've got more construction going down today. We got a forklift over there inside of the uh, the newly acquired third stall. They are assembling the lift. So lift number three is going in right over there. It's a uh, super tall 8,000 pound capacity rotary lift. They've already got it bolted in, it's assembled. They're setting up the arms right now. And uh, hopefully within another day or two, I can get that thing wired up and uh, we'll be ready to rock with uh, another third lift. But as for right now, we're going back over here into the corner of death. We're gonna get this thing back on the lift, inspected, taken apart, and uh, we're gonna proceed with uh, finalizing the re repairs that we found uh, in yesterday's inspection. As a refresher, parking the auto and powering down, we had a little bit of excessive play on the brake pedal, and there's some squeaky noises going on out back with the rear drum. So we're gonna pull these rear brakes off, inspect all that stuff. Uh, I got a sneaky suspicion that we're gonna need to replace some shoes, uh, maybe the drums. I don't know yet, but we're gonna find out. All right, he's slightly skipping ahead some here. We've got the rack set up. Green subscribe button, moving on up. Let's see, I'd say chest height is good. One more lock, clickage down on the lock for safety. There we go, that's all good. Let's get our hubcaps pulled. Never mind. Uh, never mind, I need to unscrew them. They don't pop off, okay. Do we have one on this side? Sure do. We're missing one though on the right front. That's unfortunate. Hey, anyway, let's see if the 3 8 will uh, take these lug nuts off. We unscrew the caps. Get rid of that. Nice finish on those. They've been repainted. Yeah, three eighths will pull these right off. No problem. We've got drums in the back of this thing. Hence all that squeaky noise. Pull that guy off. There we go. Let's give this drum a tink right here. See if that thing's gonna come loose. Come on, drum. There we go. Interesting. This is not what I expected to find in here. Take a look at that. This thing has fantastic shoes. A little bit of wear on it. Man, not too much over here. That's not really what I expected. I expected these things to be worn out to almost nothing at 100K. And we can also see right here the adjuster wheel is all the way in. So these shoes are as small as they can get. The issue is, is when you hit the brake pedal, the fluid's flowing through, it's going into the cylinders, and the cylinders are pressing the shoes out against the inside diameter of the drum. And they're moving so much that there's uh, some squeaks occurring between the shoe and the backing plate on both sides, just from all that motion. The reason that it's there is these aren't adjusted properly. So it appears that at some point somebody replaced these and they never got the adjustment right. That's why we have all that excessive pedal travel. So I was under the assumption we were gonna have to put some shoes on this and it appears that it just needs kind of cleaned up and it needs a, a clean and adjust on it. So that's what we're gonna do. I changed my mind. Even the drum over here is looking pretty good. You can tell it's the original, just a lot of rust and whatnot right here on the non-friction surface, but there's really not anything wrong with, uh, with these drums. So we're not putting parts in this. This is like the theme of this car. It's a no part repair. Let's run over to the other side and check on the status of this drum 
before we jump to any conclusions here. All right, a tool cart coming in, three eighths coming in. Let's get rid of our cap. Gently unclickage. Yeah, this car continues to surprise me. Get rid of that. Hammer time. Same scenario. There's not even a lot of brake dust in there. How about that? Yep, same as the other side. This is looking really good over here. The shoe's not delaminating. Good wear, or minimal wear. No leaks on the cylinders. And again, we see that this adjuster wheel is all the way in. So I'm just gonna clean these up, adjust them properly, put this thing back together. Then we can move on to the AC. All right, here's how this is gonna work out. We've got a uh, little drain bucket down here just below the drum assembly. We're gonna go ahead and spray this out, get it cleaned up. We'll polish off some of this rust right here, adjust these shoes, and then we'll move over to the other side. And now it is O'Reilly's brake clean time. Ooh, this stuff sprays good. I like it. Get behind the shoes, on the bearing, all the adjusters. Good. Let's polish off some of this rust right here. Got a little abrasive bit. It has a hole in the middle to go over the studs. For maximum contact. Shiny. There we go. Yeah, that's successfully been de-rusted. Round two. Good. While we're here, let's go ahead and get the drum cleaned out as well. I'll just hold it down over the bucket. Beautiful. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and move on to this adjuster spreader right here. We're gonna turn this a few clicks until it starts to unthread. That's gonna push the shoes away and it's gonna take up some of that clearance between the shoe and the inside bore of the, uh, of the actual drum. Now, if we look back around the backside, some of these can be adjusted with the wheels on the vehicle. You just pop that little, uh, little plug out right there and you can reach the adjuster wheel on the other side. However, since it's off, I don't have to worry about that. I'm just gonna spread this out some. It's kind of a trial and error situation. Give it a few clicks until I see some thread. There we go. Let's go ahead and test fit the drum now. Drum coming in. Let's see how this fits. Uh, I think I went a little too far. Yeah, it's a little too tight now. So, all I need to do is go back in. We'll pull the, oh, you guys can't see. I just need to pull that little tab back. That's kind of what locks in the adjuster. And we'll just back it off a few turns. Let's try it right there. Close, still too tight. feels really good. See how you can kind of hear the shoe touching the drum? 
That's perfect clearance right there. It's a little tight on it. And you can feel it when you move the drum. But there's still clearance in there where it can rotate freely without creating any friction. So this side's good. Let's move over to the driver's side and uh, repeat said procedure. All righty, moving back around. That was brake clean gravity. Here, let's throw some clicks on this adjuster real fast. Let's try it right there. Let me get the tub and we'll rinse this one out next. Encore round two. Nasty. A little bit of unrusting right here. These aren't that bad, but couldn't hurt. Comes with the service. Yeah, get in there nice and deep like, yeah. That one didn't work like the first one did. Fail. All right, enough screwing around. Let's see how this uh, drum's gonna fit here. Not bad. In fact, that's, that's like right on the money. That was perfect. I like it. All right, let's reach inside and check out the pedal effort and see, uh, see how much pedal throw we get out of this. Now we're gonna have to do a little bit of contorting to kind of get in here. We're gonna go down and up and in and through and whatnot here let's check this pedal now now you can't do this with the drums off if you push the brake pedal with the drums off or the calipers off for that matter it's going to hyper extend the pistons and they could potentially uh come out of their bore so you only want to do things like this with uh everything assembled and that's uh, feeling pretty good with a stocking the engine yeah that's a lot better very good, okay. Powering down, uh, parking brake. Where's our parking brake lever? Let's give that a tug. Oh yeah, that was very quick engagement. Okay, rear brakes are now properly adjusted. Let me slither my way out of this hole that we're in here. There we go. Very nice. Okay, let's get the wheels back on this thing. We're gonna let her down, fire it, engine back up again, and then we're gonna check out that AC system. All right, folks, we're back on the ground. We can get a reach down in here and pop an easy hood. Let's re-expose our engine compartment down our Chevrolet and get to uh, get to work on diagnosing this AC issue. Now, looking back on the part one of this video, when we did the initial inspection, I found some green dye right here on that, uh, no, that valve. Now, I learned after the fact that this system was recently recharged and everything was all copacetic, but again, we learned that it, uh, it bled out and uh, stopped working uh, effectively overnight or over like two days. So we're gonna get the machine on this, recover everything, see what's in here. That's a leaker. Probably change out some fittings, recharge it again, then maybe I'll go over it with a uh, UV light or uh, perhaps even the sniffer to see if I can't find any refrigerant that's uh, leaking out of this system here. And fortunately, it's just a 134A system, not a 1234YF system because those take too long. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep that AC machine rolling. Not giving up my day job, I know I can't sing. All right, machine powering on. Powering on now. That one's already on, how about that? So let's grab, grab our hoses here, get these guys connected, and we'll begin our process. Let's see high side, what we got going on here? Click, please, there we go. A couple turns and let's check our gauge. System is empty, there's nothing here. Completely discharged. All right, so I'm gonna head over and grab my service valves right now. There's that one and then we're gonna need some of the big 
need a big port. I don't know if I have a GM service port here. All right, we're gonna need the Schrader valve tool. Let's get the, uh, the Schrader out of the low side fitting first. We'll give that a quick inspection. We can't really see into it and I can't put any oil in there because of its sideways orientation. So I can't really confirm whether or not this is a leaker. It probably is. It's also not coming out. It's not okay. Come on, man, what are you doing? Please come out. Oh. Hmm. Well, there's an easy way to solve this little issue. Since I can't see that, I need to move it to a position where I can see it. So we'll just take the line apart right here, kind of bend this one up some, and then I can see what's going on with that valve that does not want to come out. Like we're committed now, it's got to come out. Uh, become disconnected. Yeah, there's a boatload of dye in this thing. Okay. Let's see. And it still doesn't really want to come up. I'm afraid to bend it. I don't. I don't want to do that. Bending it's not going to work for me. That was a colossal failure. Come on, valve. Come out. Like I, I think it's all the way unthreaded, but it just doesn't want to back away. I don't know what the deal is. All right. All right, so I'm kind of pulling this thing up a little farther than I want, but it's somewhat flexible. I can sort of see the valve now. It's in there free spinning, but that the core just does not want to come out. I, I can I'm try to get a hold of it with some needle noses here. Maybe that'll do it. This thing is deep in that hole and it does not want to come out. I almost think that that Schrader valve broke in half while it was in the threads. I don't see the, uh, the tip of it where it gets depressed to open. So it's something's broken off on that valve. The real question is, is can I get it out or do I have to put a line in this thing? If I can't get that to come out, we gotta change the line. Let's try some straight on needle noses as opposed to the uh, the angular ones. If I can just get a hold of it, I can pull on it some. Maybe, maybe I can get it to come out of there. These don't fit. Too big. Getting frustrated. Come on, you. Oh. Yeah, I got half of it. That is half of a valve. Okay. Yeah, look. There's some of the threads right there. This is never seize. There's anti-seize on this. Yeah, somebody knew they boogered this up. What's the deal with that? Let's see if I can't see down inside of that hole right there. Yeah, that's a negative. I can I see the other end of this uh, the Schrader down at the bottom. I gotta try to dig that out next. Alrighty, so here's the deal. I've been toiling with this thing for a while and I can't get the bottom side of the service port to come out or the Schrader valve to come out. We were able to extract this top portion right here, but the bottom portion is still stuck in there and the thing doesn't want to come out. I've uh, I've stuck some, uh, some Torx drivers inside of it and I can get a hold of the piece of brass that's in there and I can turn it, but I think it's actually in there past the thread. So I can't get the... Uh, the threads to catch um and short of replacing this line really the only thing i can think of to do is to attempt to actually drill that out uh without damaging the thread so i'm gonna try it because the line for this is uh, about a day and a half away and i really don't want to wait i'd like to get this car like fixed and done and out with almost no parts uh, i'd like to only put in like one part on this car because that's kind of the theme but um uh, I really have no other option here. I've been, like I said, been messing with it for a while and it's not going anywhere. Um, next up, I'm just gonna try to go in there with a drill bit, see if I can't drill that outer diameter away, maybe flush it out with some air, and then, uh, well, we'll see if it's gonna work or not. So I've got an airline here and it will extend in past the valve area. So whatever, whatever drill shavings I do create, I can just kind of blow in some air from this point and it should kind of back flow and, uh, and flush out any contaminants that might end up inside of that. So it's risky, um, but uh, the downside is, is I'll have to replace the line. I gotta replace it anyway, so I'm, I'm trying to save it. 
we will see. I don't know if it's gonna work or not. It might. Let's try it out. That bit appears to, to fit, okay? Let's see what happens here. It's uh, gonna work or it's not, so I hope it works. Beginning drilling now. I've never drilled an AC fitting out before. And it's not gonna work because the thing's just spinning. I'm gonna push it real hard, see what it does. Come on. It's not even taking a bite out of it. That's silliness. Much silliness. Oh, I hear noises. Something's happening. Oh, I think it bit in. Hmm. There's some metal in there. Blow it out some. Okay. Try again. Drilling continues. Ooh, it went through. All right. No way. I got it. Kind of came out. But I don't know if that's all of it or not. That might just be the little threaded area right there. Uh, well, let's blow that out. Venturi. I think I got it all out of there. But there might have been a piece that went down inside. That's kind of concerning. Let me see if I can't put this new valve in. Let's see what that does. That tightened up. Okay. pull that new valve out so the threads are still good it's sealed hmm. all right okay so I am of the opinion that there are some pieces left over inside of that tube if we examine what oh I dropped it hang on that's that was terrible got it all right, here's what we've got going on so far. We have a new valve as an example. Here is the old valve that we had to tear out with the needle noses. And this right here is the section of the old valve that I had to drill out. Now we are missing the area where the seal is and it looks like the bottom seal section right here. So that tells me there's still some debris left inside of that. Uh, that being said, I, I'm gonna have to uh, probably disconnect that hose somewhere else and blow a bunch of air through it just to blow out that debris. Um, it's no longer inside of the threads or inside of the fitting, it fell down into the hose. So we gotta get that stuff out of there. So that operation was kind of a success. Uh, I need to detach this line right here from the compressor. That way I can blow air into it and kind of back flush it out because whatever I drilled out, it must have fallen into that hose as soon as the, as the drill went through. So. I'm not, I don't want to risk it. There is a filter in here, but just in case those little particles make it past that filter, I've got to make an attempt to at least uh, blow this out as best I can. Come off. Come off, I say. Oh, there's a clip. Hang on here. I'm doing it all wrong. There, that's what was holding me up. That guy. Those are usually missing. Okay. So here's our line running down to the compressor and then it comes out right over here at the condenser. So I'm going to detach it down below under the bumper at the condenser and we'll blow it out from there. Oh, let's see here. Yeah, right. Mm, that one. That one right there on the bottom. That's the one. Let's pull that guy out and we'll try to blow that line. It's going to blow through the compressor. But as it exits the compressor, it's going to come through this line right here and hopefully it'll blow all that debris out of the hole. 
when I uh, when I put the air pressure to it, we're gonna see. Well, I'm gonna put you guys up here to keep an eye on that, and you let me know if that piece of metal comes flying out or not. All right, crawling back down. We're gonna get under here with a, a ratcheting wrench. See what I can't do about uh, trying to back flush this thing out of here. Trying to not spend a bajillion dollars. All right, unclickage. That's good. Come out, bolt. Come out. All right, so all I need to do is pump some air into there. It's gonna go up into the compressor and then out through that line and hopefully it will eject those pieces of uh, metal of that valve. It'll shoot those things out and then we're good to reassemble this and uh, fingers crossed it won't have any other leaks. All right, Troy's gonna help us out. He's gonna stand by right here and watch to confirm to me uh, and to you whether or not that piece of chunk of whatever comes flying out. I'm gonna go down below, apply some air pressure and uh, hopefully it will blow that thing out. I expect that uh, that piece of metal only made it to like right around here somewhere. It couldn't have gone all the way down. So let's see if we can't get that thing to come out. Here, you hold your hand in front of that and tell me if you get hit with a like a lightning fast speed piece of metal flying, okay? I'll let you know if I get cut. All right, you just, you let me know if you get shot with that thing and we'll figure out what to do next after that, okay? Okay. Good plan. Got air coming out? No, not really. Nothing? Really, nothing? That's a bunch of fooey. Hmm. Why not? Not working? Try it again. Stop. You feel any air? No, not no. really. Okay, that was a failed attempt. Gotta figure something else out. Thank you, sir. Yep. Hmm, looks like I have to detach this line at the compressor. That makes this horse a different color now, doesn't it? Because I can't really reach. I don't think. I mean, I can. It's, it's, it's not that far. I'm just being lazy. All right, let me get down there and uh, get that thing removed. I need a, uh, that'll do it, and a 13. Look at that. Everything's right in front of me. Perfect. All right, let's get this line all the way detached, and we'll flush it out. I'd say this job's really escalating quite quickly. I've disconnected right there. That's the uh, the high side pressure switch. And I'm reaching around the line. I know you guys can't see. I'm on the manifold bolt. I bolt this assembly to the manifold. We're just gonna pull that out and remove the entire assembly. It's been unbolted from both sides and well, I've gotta take it out anyway, whether I replace it or repair it, so. Let's just get to it. Come out, come out. I think that's good, almost. Ratchet that bolt out the rest of the way and this little guy will come free. Come here, bolt. Come on, I'm getting my knees are getting locked here. There we go. Uh, what's this thing stuck on? I don't know. It's stuck on its own hoses. That's what it's stuck on. They're all intertwined slightly. No worries. It's coming out. You will come out of there. Come on, manifold. This is going to be interesting to put back together. It's got all these bends and turns and things of that nature. All right, so that piece of metal should be in here somewhere. So let's get it out of there. How about that? Air pressure.
Okay. Well, if it was in there, it's out now. That's for certain. Okay, let's uh, get a new valve inside of this thing and then uh, we'll get it reassembled, recharged, and we'll go from there. Finally. Okay, new replacement valve. Let's get that guy set up. And I dropped it, not okay. There, do it the easy way. We'll let gravity do its job. Tighten that guy down and give it some clickage. That's good to go. Okay, now we've made certain that this manifold has no debris in it. I've got some new O-rings on the compressor side. Uh, I've got a new O-ring that goes on the hose side over here on the car, so that's gonna be this seal. And then the one down below is getting a new O-ring, but it's not here yet, so that's, that's our old one. But that's not going to prohibit me from reinstalling this because I can just reach down below and uh, get the uh, next O-ring in position. So, let me get this thing maneuvered back down into its home down there. And we'll get her all bolted back together. Oh, come here! Fidgety little thing. There we go. That is the correct position. Now, I did bend this line ever so slightly, this one here. So once I bolt that down to the compressor, I can just go ahead and bend it back. That's kind of going to be the plan here. Compressor bolt coming in. I know you guys can't see. I can't even see. No one can see. But I can feel it and you can hear me. So I suppose that will have to be sufficient. All right, let's go back in there with our ratchet. Set that up for tightening. There we go. Okay, socket wrench coming in. Let's keep twisting that handle until we get full tightness action. It's a really cool tool. It ratchets no matter which direction you turn the handle. Oh, you can just kind of rock back and forth with it. There we go. It's becoming secured. And clickage right there. All right, that guy's in. So now, we're just gonna flex this downwards ever so slightly up until the point where this bracket meets its uh, little hole right here where it plugs in on that little clip. Let's see here, a little more. Let's get you nice and lined up. Right there, that's good, beautiful. We've got a new gasket right here, so I can go ahead, get this line reconnected to the manifold line. Let's plug this guy back in, right there. Good. Get this guy tight. Package. There we go. And we need to get down below, but I'm waiting on my gasket to arrive. I suppose I can go ahead and put that air box back on at this point, and we can get that high side valve over there changed out. We can do that while I'm waiting on those replacement gaskets to arrive. I just ordered them. So while those are in route, we can get this thing back together and get the uh get on there please get all the way on there what are you doing there we go it's a tight squeeze this whole air box assembly thing is a tight squeeze it does not uh doesn't move around easily there's our clip put the clip in that's secure and I need some screwdriver. Oh. Tighten up our clamp down here. That's the throttle body clamp. There we go. And this one over here on the air box.
Okay, now we need to take this service port off of here, uh, but that's gonna require some special tools. I'll show you what I mean. Let me find the replacement. That's it right there. You can see that's not exactly, well, how many sides is that? Eight sides? It requires an eight-sided type of uh, fastener. There's a special socket, I think that's it. A special socket that fits onto those uh, service valves. Tight squeeze too. Anyway, this is the socket I need to remove this old valve from this line. And then again, same socket to get the new valve on. Slip that on like that. Okay, so no re is necessary. But if I attempt to put a, a ratchet on this to turn that thing to break it loose, it's gonna twist up the line. So I'm just gonna bash it with an impact. Watch it spin right off, watch this. Just like that. Beautiful. Nice and easy. And I will repeat with the impact to uh, get it reinstalled. Come out. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. There it is. It's got, already got an O-ring and some thread lock on it. We'll just get it started here. Socket. Just like that. And we're stuck. Give me back my socket. Please. Give it back to me. To tight fit. Okay. Let's try this. There it goes. Got it. Okay. So at this point, let me get uh, my high side fitting reinstalled. Click you on. Open that up, and it's a waiting game for that gasket to show up. Alrighty, we have fast forwarded through time ever so slightly. I have received the gaskets. It was uneventful. I went down there and laid in the ground, rolled in the dirt, uh, got the gaskets on. So next up, let's get this machine connected all the way. We'll fire up the vacuum pump, pull the system down into a vacuum. We will conduct the vacuum test, which means we're just gonna let it hang out while it's down inside of a vacuum and we're gonna check it for any leakages. If, uh, if we achieve vacuum on this, and then the gauges starts to tick up ever so slightly, that's gonna let us know there is in fact some kind of a leak. So we'll set this to vacuum test on. 10 minute vacuum proceeding. We're coming down right now, see that? Some light on the thing. And that is a 29.9 inches vacuum. It'll begin the test and then we can verify whether or not there's any other leaks on this. In the meantime, I'm going to fetch the UV light. There we go. And we can just give this thing a quick glance with the UV. If there is any dye, like right there, you see that dye that's on the uh, fitting? It's gonna grow, grow, grow. It's gonna glow like a super bright green. So we're gonna crawl down below the bumper and just kind of take a look at everything we can see. That's a little green right there, except that's the radiator. Uh, looking in through the front, I don't see anything. No green action here. No green action here. If we see any traces of dye, that could indicate a potential leak that uh, has been missed. I don't see anything up there. Condenser looks good. The, uh, the light shows kind of white on the camera, but it is in fact a very deep purple. It's a black light, ultraviolet. So the condenser looks good. Let's see if we can't see the compressor. A uh, little bit of dye on the compressor from when I was touching it. Let's see. Now what, see all that splotchy bit of business right there? That's not actually refrigerant dye, that's a corrosion. This uh, corrosion is almost just as reactive to the dye or to the light as the dye is. Uh, all that up there, that was caused by me when we took the manifold off. This was the uh, bottom part of the line right here. So what we see here, that's not really much to worry about. I think we're good with all the external components. 
we'll let the vacuum test tell the rest of the story and if that's uh if it's gonna hold a good vacuum we can go ahead and recharge it and see how the system performs hey look at here leak detection passed we're holding vacuum let's go ahead and initiate the charge we're ready to rock and roll with this thing trying to make it cold what is our specified amount of refrigerant it looks like it's going to be 0 0.41 kilograms or 0 0.9 pounds and since we're operating under freedom units here we're going to go ahead and we're going to charge this under pounds not a poe system sorry european types didn't mean to rub in that freedom unit thing it's fourth of july week it's independence day week for us i get to say that begin charging come on zero zero point nine pounds refrigerant and we'll do that on the high side why not that's standardish protocol beginning charging now there we go ready to rock and roll high sides taking the charge low sides coming up it's well halfway done already this is going in quick half a pound 0.6 pounds all right looking good looking good now since we're doing a uh, high side charge i don't need this low side on let me check that for some leak action here if it's leaking it's gonna leak a lot and i don't feel it or hear it okay put that guy back on real quick i do want to get a pressure reading after we get this thing started and cooling 0.8 pounds yep give it a minute 0.886 pounds refrigerant almost there let's head on into the cabin reaching on in starting the engine let's get our thermal meter installed in the center vent powering on let's go recirculate i heard the compressor click on hose equalize hose compensate we will go ahead and hose compensate our pressures are looking good at 175 psi on the high side right around 40 on the low side this is good see the radiator fan is fanning that is critical to get some airflow over the condenser otherwise it won't be able to pull any heat out of the system and it'll just heat soak and saturate until it no longer blows cold and that would be bad the hose comp is almost finished. We're raw. We're nearly ready to, to disconnect. We fetch my socket, our plug, and I need. I think I lost it. I lost the cap for the low side. Oh no! Hey, never mind. It's over here on the machine. I didn't lose it. Uh, okay, we are all set. It instructed me to disconnect the hoses, which I will promptly do. Low side disconnect. I'm not going to add any dye into the system because there's already plenty in there. That one doesn't even, that's not it. Wrong one. Let's try this one. Get this screw in. Said not a chance. Well, we can at least do the high side. Put that guy on, good to go. Here I pulled one out of my service kit. That one's definitely gonna work. All right. Clickage, cap click. If you don't, so caps are on, service ports are changed, the line has been blown out, system's been recharged, pressures were looking good. All right, let's power down our drop light, get this thing out of the way. We're gonna close it up, back her out and hit the road i want to see how these brakes feel and then we can reevaluate the ac system performance once uh once we're out on the road let's see how this thing is going to do for us Ooh, feels cooler this is good i love it crank windows that's how it's done that's how you avoid selling eighty thousand dollar cars you put in basic amenities not super high-tech bluetooth windows that communicate with your brain chip so they uh they go up and down without you actually thinking about it yeah that's the future let's not run over that cv axle down there see that Ooh, we cleared it 
backing out. I don't know where Troy went. He was just standing there. Hope I don't run him over. Okay, we're clearing the wall, clearing the door, clearing the fan, clearing the axle, clearing that door, and the other fan, and the lawn chair. We're clearing everything. We're good to go here. Backing out is the auto. Center vent says we're down to just over 60 degrees. It's not perfect, but it's also not 100 degrees. And with an ambient temp of like 94 degrees today, I can settle for 60 while stationary. Okay, so the first thing I'm noticing while driving is we don't have that sinking pedal anymore. It's got good, fast, and responsive brake pedal action. That's because the shoes do not have to take up all that space uh, in the drum. So far, so good. Nice and smooth. Let's give it a brake event. Oh yeah, brakes feel great. Very nice. Nice firm pedal. Making a right yellow light. And our thermal meter tells us we're in the mid 50s, what, 58? It's not horrible. All right guys, I think this one's good to go. We've accomplished everything that needed to be accomplished and the only things that we had to spend money on with regards to parts have been a couple little gaskets and a Schrader valve, plus a little bit of refrigerant. Not too shabby for a no parts repair. And that's two days in a row we had a no parts repair. We had the fuel pump from the first video and then we had the AC and the brake system uh, on this video. So that's three operations, almost no parts. Saving some money, all right. Hello, shop. We can see you. I think I should advertise for the shop on that billboard right there. What do you guys think? Is that a good idea? Or is it uh, kind of lawyer-like? Yeah, let me know in the comment section down below. Anyway, guys, we've just crested the bridge. I'm headed back to the shop. It's the end of the day. Almost five o'clock. Don't know if you can see that. Check that thing out. About to wreck the car. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out right now. Uh, I will do that as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. Certainly hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that by tapping that like button down below. Drop me a comment or two while you're down there, especially about that billboard. And most importantly, see ya. don't forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of video, end of cobalt, end of AC, end of brake job, end of fuel pump, end of transmission.